Welcome to CBS Sports HQ presented by Enterprise. Amanda Garrett, Chris Hassel here still putting on his little makeup hey, be right before that. we come <laughs> on the show. <laughs> Lige Deucible, Pete Prisco. We're going to go through uh, playoff scenarios for both the AFC and NFC. But before we get started, Pete, I was listening to the Big Six podcast. So on this January 3rd, I would like to wish you a happy new year. Uh, you're, you guys are violators. Everybody no, says it. she's a violator. You've I said would it never too. do that. After the first, if that's it, you can't, can't say, say Happy anymore. New Year. Somebody anymore. at the grocery no. store what, today what, what, told what, what, me Happy New Year. Place? Because is, is was today New Year's? No, it wasn't. was yesterday New Year's? No, the day before was. Yeah, violator. I think <laughs> you can, I think you can say it on the second, and that's it. <laughs> third, we're done. No more. No, no more Happy New Year. No more. No more. Happy New Year. Even if you have for like Larry a week. David says the third. So, uh, but I'm more of a curmudgeon than Larry David. Notice so. how they put up the full screen to get us to, mm, to keep moving really on here. These are the division scenarios in the AFC as we head into the final week of the season. No Thursday game. No Monday game. Two games on Saturday, and then everything else on Sunday. Sunday night is the, the we're going to decide the AFC East with the Bills and the Dolphins in the AFC South. Three teams alive there. Jacksonville controls their own fate. If they win, they are the winner of the division. But those other teams play. Colts, Texans play each other. Winner of that game gets a playoff spot. And that is where we are going to start with Pete Prisco and Lige Doosable here. Again, Texans Colts play on Saturday. They might not win the division, but the winner of this game is guaranteed a playoff spot, at least a wild card. Yeah, I can't wait for this game on Saturday, and I don't think anybody going into this season would have imagined that the Texans and the Colts would be in this <laughs> scenario. Two new head coaches, rookie head coaches, right? And then if you look at both teams, the Colts started off with a rookie quarterback as well, and Anthony Richardson, and Gardner Minshew comes in. He has real familiarity with their coach from being with him in Philadelphia, and then you look at C.J. Stroud, right? To me, he was in the MVP running before he had the, the concussion and missed a couple of games, but he'll definitely, definitely still be in offensive rookie of the year category as well both of these teams like again nobody pictured them being in this position the one thing I want to look at this week Pete is this Colts rush offense versus Texans defensive uh, against the run right when you look at the Houston Texans they averaged 3.3 yards per carry stopping guys against the run if you look at the Colts Jonathan Taylor came back right kind of looked like himself last week averaged over four and a half yards a carry had his score on the opening drive I think that's going to determine this game because we know the Colts want to run the ball, but the Texans have done a really good job in minimizing the run this season. I love what D'Amico Ryans and, and Shane Steigen have done. I mean, when you look at it, these guys, you, like you said, yeah. nobody thought these two teams would be the in the Texans mix. The Texans had the longest odds, tied with the Cardinals, to to make the, to sure. win the Super Bowl, yeah. and now they're, they have a chance to get into the It's postseason. a lesson in football 101. If you get the right coach and you get the right quarterback, you're mm -hmm. going to win. And not only are they going to win, maybe not this year, but they're going to have sustainable success now for a long time. They found their quarterback. They obviously found their head coach. And what the head coach did, he's a defensive guy. He brought it in an offensive system that makes it easy on the quarterback. Yeah. It's a great, it's the 49ers system. That's basically what they're running. And it's a great system for a young quarterback. I love what they've done. Look, I'm critical of Gardner Minshew at times. There's no question about that. I think he's streaky. He'll go hot. He'll go bad. Mm -hmm. um, but he's done a nice job as well. And so this is a big-time game. And not only that, they can win the division if Jacksonville were to lose to the Tennessee Titans. Sportsline gives the Colts a slight edge in this game. You guys Ooh. buy that? I don't. I'm buying the Texans in Me this too. game. C.J. Stroud coming back, completing 75% of his passes last week. Looked like he picked up right where he left off. And again, we know what Shane Steichen did in Philadelphia. They want to establish the run. But this Houston Texans defensive front now, the concern is all four starters were on the injury report this week and didn't practice yesterday. We'll see what Thursday brings because usually that's where you get some type of notion of whether somebody is going to play based off that two days before. Usually it's a Friday practice, but because they play on Saturday, it'll be a Thursday practice. If those guys go on Thursday, I feel more confidence in the Houston Texans. Let's not forget the first time they played, the Colts kind of boat raced, and they were up uh, by 18 points going into the fourth quarter. We saw C.J. Stroud throw for 384, but a lot of it was garbage yardage. But this is a totally different Texans team. I would lean towards the Houston Texans winning this game on the road. What about the Jags, Pete? All they have to do is win in Nashville against the Titans to go ahead and win the division. Sounds easy, uh, but as you mentioned yesterday, playing there has not been all that kind to them. It has not, but I think last week did a lot to refocus this team. I, I really do. I think they've got away from themselves. They, and I've said that before. I've heard from people up there that this young team kind of started reading their press clippings and not putting the work in, and they were getting a little frustrated with the coaching staff on what they were doing. They seemed to get back refocused last week. They didn't have Trevor Lawrence. They knew they had to play better on defense. They did. Here's the other thing. 
Cam Robinson back healthy now. Mm -hmm. Christian Kirk's window has been Man. opened up, and that's important to them. If they get Christian Kirk back in that offense, particularly for the postseason, if they do get there, that's really important. Zay Jones is getting healthier. They're going to have the nucleus of the offense back together for the first time if Trevor Lawrence can play in a long, long time. I, you, I, Liz, I was, well, hello. As I was mentioning, I was listening to Pick 6 Podcast, and you said something interesting, though, about this team, though, that the way they get going, you feel like they get a little lackadaisical. They do. There's no question about that. They're young players. There's not a lot of leaders on that team because you don't have a lot of veteran guys to hang around and look up to. And, and so I think that's part of the problem for them. And, and the coaching staff needs to do a better job of getting them refocused. I think last week was good. Yep. I do think they get back refocused this week. They'll win the game uh, in Nashville. And the question becomes, now that you get everybody back, can you make a little run in the postseason? Because I thought they were going to be really good on offense and not so good on defense. They have two pass rushers that have 25 and a half sacks Crazy. combined, which is the most of any two on any team in the league. That's incredible. Speaking of that, and I know we've been real hard on their defense because they've really struggled against the pass this year. But when you look at Josh Allen, the defensive end, not the quarterback, you stated it. He should be in the defense of the year uh, category. He is not getting enough praise for what he's done. Over 16 sacks this year. But to me, the, the biggest thing is how healthy are they going into this game? Pete, you know this. Not having your quarterback, not the quarterback not having his safety blanket and Christian Kirk, that has affected this team. He, we always talk about it. When you want to make a run in the playoffs, you got to have a little bit of luck, right? They've had the injury bug the last Last few weeks looks like they could be getting healthy at the right time if they are to get Christian Kirk back if they get Zay Jones back and Trevor Lawrence is 80 85 percent this team like you said they could get streaky and get hot we saw them last year versus the Chargers down big in the first half being able to put it together and they were one or two plays away from knocking off Kansas City in a divisional round so that's something to watch with this team getting healthy at the right time and let's not forget as good as Baltimore's playing a couple weeks ago in Jacksonville they had four times inside the 30 yeah. yard line and had no Jacksonville had no point Points, including a botched end of the half situation where they should have spiked the football. Speaking of Baltimore, they have the one seed locked up, so uh, who knows who they will and won't play this week against a Pittsburgh Steelers team that is trying to get in the playoffs. Now, they, they not only need to win this game against Baltimore, they need help. They need either a Bills loss or a Jags loss. There's a couple other things that could happen, but Sportsline has adjusted. Earlier in the week, they were saying 35% chance for the Steelers. Now it's down to 28, just under 29% chance to get in. Yeah, when you look at this team, when Mike Tomlin decided to go with Mason Rudolph, I think he really gave this team some energy, right? They've looked efficient on offense. George Pickens has come alive the last few weeks. I really love the aggression last week versus the Seattle Seahawks, right? In that situation, you get an onside kick. A lot of teams would have ran the ball three times for Seattle to use their timeouts and then play defense. Well, Mike Tomlin, there's a video of him on the sideline saying, we're not going to be conservative. We're going to be aggressive. Let's get a high accurate throw from Mason Rudolph. Let's go to our best receiver on the outside in George Pickens. I think he caught Seattle off guard throwing the ball on first down to essentially win that game so he's done a really good job of really opening up this offense Mike Sullivan the offensive coordinator now slash quarterback coach has done a really good job dialing it up but Pete what they've really done well in the last few weeks is run the football this is what we're accustomed to seeing from this Pittsburgh Steelers team right gritty aggressive competitive team they ran the ball down Seattle's throat last week so you talked about it has their chances have gone down just because I think a lot of people assume that Buffalo may win with all the injuries to the Miami Dolphins and then if you look at Jackson playing a Titans team that is essentially getting ready for the offseason their chances aren't that wet, aren't that good but if you look at what Mike Tomlin has done a lot of people thought this team was going to have a losing record they were trending in that direction for him to galvanize this team and potentially win three straight kudos to him doing a hell of a job for the Pittsburgh Steelers I think the odds have gone down a little bit because there's some rumblings that the Ravens are going to play some people in that this game and, yeah. and if they do you know the Baltimore's a better team than the Steelers so that's maybe why they've come down a little bit as well look Pittsburgh what Mike Tomlin's done with this team is outstanding because they're not very good in any facet of the game. <laughs> I mean, other than T.J. Watt, who's great at rushing the passer, you look at this team across the board, they've had problems stopping the run. They've had problems stopping the pass. They haven't been able to throw the football consistently. They don't run the ball well. Their offensive line's been a problem. And yet here they are on the verge of possibly getting into the postseason. That's an incredible coaching job by Mike Tomlin. Lee J, you mentioned it. A lot of people think that the Bills may be able to take care of the Dolphins. Huge game coming up Sunday night in the AFC East. Winner gets the AFC East. Now, Dolphins, they've already clinched a playoff spot. Bills, there's a chance. We're going to get to that in a second. They can miss it out entirely. We'll go through that scenario here in a second. Uh, but talk to us about this game because of the injuries on the Dolphins' side. And I think that's what it is. And, Pete, we talked about this earlier, right? you got to have a little bit of luck 
when you're making a run in the playoffs. Now, for the Dolphins, the good thing are they are they already have a playoff spot. Now they haven't clinched the AFC East, but they're getting hurt at the wrong time. Got Bradley Chubb, Jalen Phillips, their two best pass rushers are out for the year. A lot of people kind of gave Mike McDaniel some grub for Bradley Chubb being in that game so late when it was already decided. And then Xavier Howard hasn't been healthy, and he's most likely going to probably miss this game. Talk about Raheem Mostert. There's reports coming out that that injury was serious. I think there was a lot of him gutting it out last week, and he wasn't able to play. I mean, last week, the week before, he gutted it out. Now, now you don't have him in the backfield. So, so many injuries. And then, let's not forget, Tua Tagovailoa went down in that game. Now, they said he potentially could have come back in, but the game was already decided. Why was he in the game? Yeah, he shouldn't That's have been that late. Question. Yeah, Why was so, he in the game? Just looking at the Buffalo team and how they're trending, yes, their offense hasn't been as explosive, but that defense that everybody talked about, Pete, they're playing top 10 defense right now. I mean, when they traded for Rasul Douglas, I'm not sure that anybody thought it was going to be as significant as it has been. I mean, he was defensive player of the, the week this past week, two interceptions in that game. Does a really good job of forcing fumbles as well from the cornerback position. And then Bernard, the linebacker, has played Pro Bowl type football, especially after they lost Milano. So I know people will talk about Josh Allen in the offense, but that defense has really played well the last three weeks. The defense has improved. The Benford being back helps them a big deal as well on the secondary. But you know those pictures that they have of me where I'm like the baby, I'm sitting in Gardner Minshew's uh, arms. You yeah, know he's that? carrying you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Have we Josh, put that on air, or is yeah, that just like, yeah, a, like a text it's, it's thing? Been, it's no, been no. on the air. Yeah. It was on and, yesterday. But Josh Allen can do that and put the Miami Dolphins as his baby. He's owned them. <laughs> oh I mean, goodness. he's owned them. Think about that. In the regular season, 9-2. and two, He's 10-2 and two overall count in the playoffs. But he's got 39 touchdowns and 10 picks. Think about that. 31 mm. passing touchdowns in the regular season against five interceptions. He's dominated them, and now you're facing them without your two top pass rushers both out for the year. Yeah. If they don't roll up a big number this week, I will be astounded. And by the way, earlier in the season, four touchdown passes, ran for one, perfect passer rating against the Miami Dolphins. Are you concerned how he's played the last no, few weeks? zero, right? none. 50% completion. Zero, they run week. the ball. I was about to say, though, it's gonna be, it Dallas, could be potentially rainy, though, which may play more in... Well, the way Buffalo's run the ball, I don't think it, it benefits them that much just because Buffalo has been able to run the ball. Now, the Miami Dolphins actually do a really good job of stopping the run because they have a really stout defensive front when you look at the guys like Sealer up front Wilkins. and Wilkins up front. So they do a good job stopping the run. So if it is rainy, I think to me that may benefit the Miami Dolphins just because Josh Allen won't be able to sling the ball around. But I believe windy? his legs. Is it windy? That's the question. Is it windy? If it's oh, not okay. windy, here, if it's here not you go. Windy, windy, girl, just, just Amanda Garrett. Pete Prisco here. Us. Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> it depends how fast this internet's going to well, run. You know what? If it's not windy, the rain won't be that big a deal. That guy, can rip, it, that guy yeah. can rip it through anything. No, it's not, not, not keep, that windy. You can't trust a, a forecast a three, four days A west-northwest wind about 10 miles per hour. That's good. It's just not that bad if you see over here. You have your green screen behind you. Right here, yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I feel like we're all just kind of assuming that Buffalo is going to win this game. They're going to get the two seed. They're going to breeze into the playoffs and be a top contender to the Ravens. But if they lose this game, there's a chance Buffalo misses out on the playoffs yeah. altogether because if Pittsburgh wins, they're favored. If Jacksonville wins, they're favored. Buffalo is out. out Sportsline yeah. says 5% chance that would happen. But wow. here's 5% for you. A month ago, Buffalo only had a 5% chance <laughs> to, to win the it. division, yeah. <laughs> according to Sportsline. Pete, do you see this happening? Them not making it? Yes. No, they're going to beat Miami. They, they will beat Miami. They will win the division. And when they get in, they're going to have a home playoff game and they will be dangerous come postseason. Yeah, to me, it's too many injuries to overcome. You talk about not having your top running back who's set records for the Miami Dolphins and touchdown carries. Uh, Jalen Waddle to pair with Tariq Hill most likely not being able to play with that high ankle sprain. I don't know if Tua with a banged up shoulder can overcome all these injuries. And we haven't talked about the offensive line. Their offensive line has struggled to stay healthy to the Miami Dolphins. And this Bills defensive line has really come the last few weeks. When you talk about Ed Oliver, he's having a career year as well. So I just think it's too many injuries has for this Miami Dolphins team to overcome. And, and the Buffalo Bills have had their fair share of injuries they all year too. as well. I mean, they lost their top corner. They lost their top linebacker. Yeah. They didn't have Daquan Jones for a long time. He's back now. Yeah. Von Miller's been a shell of himself. He was a healthy and active player yeah. last week. So uh, I think when you look at this, they both all had a lot of injuries. The difference will be the offense of the Buffalo Bills will show up and put up a big number. That game going down at Sunday night. That is the playoff picture in the AFC. Talking about the games you can see on CBS this Sunday, including Jags, that, that game where they can just beat the Titans, take the AFC South, also South 
South. Allergies are horrible, man. <laughs> Bears and backers, Chiefs at Chargers, Eagles at Giants. Welcome back into CBS Sports HQ going off playoff scenarios entering week 18. We just did the AFC. Now we're going to turn to the NFC. All right, here's what's at stake. Dallas can clinch the NFC East with a win against the Commanders or a Philadelphia loss. Philly, who decided, y'all are driving me crazy here behind the scenes. <laughs> Philly can clinch the division with a win against the Giants there in New York, but they also need Dallas to lose as well. When it comes to the NFC South, Tampa Bay, all they need to do is win at Carolina there. How Ever, if Tampa loses, the winner of the Falcon Saints can win the division. And even if Tampa wins, there's also a scenario where the Saints could potentially get into the playoffs there. So we're going to go through some of that. Not all of it. <laughs> we're going to go through some of it there. Uh, Liget asked Pete this. Is there any way Carolina could potentially beat the Bucks? You're already shaking your head now. Well, there's always, there's always a way. way. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. always a it's way. Always the ball away. Every quarterback is playing for his job. They beat the every Texans at home. What? They beat the Texans at home. Yeah, but they're not going to beat the Bucs at home. <laughs> the Bucs have to have this game. They know what they win, they're in. There's a lot of motivation there. We know teams that aren't motivated to be doing anything. What are they doing? They're looking for their next uh, tropical location. So they've already <laughs> made the reservations. They're out the door on, on Tuesday after yeah. they have one day back on Monday. So, no, I think the Bucs win the game. I think last week was a bad look for Tampa. Man. Offensively, they were awful. Are you worried and about Baker Mayfield's injury at all? No, I think he'll be He's fine. I, I yeah. just worry about the way they played last week. They got dominated up front. Man. They got pushed around by the Saints in every way, shape, or form, running the ball. They couldn't run it well. They got, didn't protect Baker Mayfield at all. Yeah. So, But I do think they bounce back here. I think they're the better team by far, and I think they win the game. I think they win, too, but you stated something. I, I wonder what it does for their psyche, right? Because... They win this game, they get into the playoffs, they win the division. But they had that same scenario last week versus Saints versus a divisional foe who, because they let win that game, still has a chance to get into the playoffs even if the Bucs do beat Carolina. So we talked about this, Pete, all last week. We knew that the Saints going to Tampa was going to be hard for the Bucs because they've had a lot of success. And that was our question mark. Knowing that defensive front from the Saints, would Tampa Bay be able to protect? Well, they weren't. Baker Mayfield was harassed the whole game. Before you knew it, it was 20 nothing going into the fourth quarter. And that defense that we were talking about finally getting starting to get healthy, I mean, Jawan Johnson, they had no answer for him the whole game. He was killing them down the seam. So if it is Tampa Bay uh, team, there's no better team to play this week than the Carolina Panthers to get your confidence back up as you get ready for the playoffs. So I do think they win this game because, like you said, Carolina most likely has already packed it up, getting ready for the offseason. They're dealing with other issues with their owner throwing drinks well, That's at what I'm saying. If you're a Bucks fan and you're sitting <laughs> below there, bring an umbrella. Even if it's not raining. <laughs> They're dealing with other issues. But I think Tampa Bay does get back on track. The question is, what does it do for their psyche knowing that a divisional foe went into their house last week and beat them down? By the way, he got fined $300,000 in his grand scheme of things with what he's worth. I think it was Drop the equivalent the of $1.76. Should the fan get that money, Pete? Oh, gosh. $1.76? Oh. Or the 300000 Hot mess okay. hassle. Fans should get some of that, right? Did, did, oh, if did, I was that fan, I would have fell is, out. And be like, ah, oh, I can't see. Oh, my God. <laughs> the question oh is, <laughs> did it even reach the fan? That's you know, he course. threw it at yeah. the fan. Did yeah. it reach him? Okay, you don't think the Panthers have a chance to win this game. If they do, though, the Falcons Saints game would be for the division. The Falcons can still win the division. They cannot get a wild card. Now the Saints will still be alive no matter what. 31% chance to get in for New Orleans and 9% oh. chance for the Falcons. I like the Saints to win this game, but just too many injuries at the quarterback position. We don't know if Heineke is going to play or Desmond Ritter is going to play. And Derek Carr, he's shown me something in the last few weeks. Even though they lost that game versus the Rams, I thought he actually played pretty well in that game. He played really well last week, was efficient, and he didn't have that costly turnover that we're accustomed to seeing him do, Pete. So if you look at this game, yes, the, the New Orleans Saints playing the Atlanta Falcons divisional foe, that game can go either way. But I just think the way the Saints defense is playing, it seems like Derek Carr, the last few weeks has gotten some confidence with that offense and his pass catchers. I like the Saints to win this game. It's an interesting game because the winner could be w win the division and could be in. The loser, whether they either one loses, could have their coach fired. Mm. Think about that. Both coaches are in trouble. 
I, I don't necessarily think they're definitely going to get fired, but their names have been bandied about as two coaches that could be fired after the season. So imagine the scenario if Carolina were to beat <laughs> uh, were to beat Tampa, the winner goes into the postseason. The two coaches might be playing for their jobs. So it, it's really an interesting situation in week eight, in week 18. 425 on CBS. We get a really interesting game here. We get Bears and Packers. Um, and and here's the thing with this one is it, for the Packers, it's the same situation as last year. Yeah, they were facing the Lions. All they had to do was win, and they were in. Lions had nothing to play for. They beat them. Same thing with the Bears. They're already out of the postseason as well. But this year, they have a quarterback. They do. Oh! <laughs> also, Bears isn't a quarterback. I'm huh? kidding. I'm kidding. Bears, Matt LaFleur said this. They are probably the most improved team. I mean, maybe the Texans as well from week one. It's incredible how, how much better they are. Man. And, and, we, and we said this a lot leading up. You know, I was ready to bury them a couple different times. As the young guys have improved, this team has improved. You know, you go across the board. The offensive line had all kinds of issues yep. early in the season. Now they've solidified the left tackle spot. They're playing. Tom is playing great at right tackle. And across the board, they're much better. They get, still don't have the full complement of weapons either because Watson hasn't been in the they line. I have it this week either. Right. Yeah. So I think this team is getting better and better in large part because the quarterback is getting yeah. better. They, he, the, it, the answer is there. He is their guy. He's proven proven that to people. He's proven that to the skeptics, and we know some of them before the season. Uh, this guy can play, and he's showing it, and he's, you know what? He plays with a calm demeanor. He That's does. what I love about him, and, and I go back to my conversation with him this summer. I said, you know, people are riding you. They don't think you can do it. He looked at me, and he went, I don't care, and I said, okay, that's fine. He has fire in the belly. He doesn't care, and his teammates all love him. Now, Pete, we were high on Jordan Love coming into the season. We felt like the Green Bay Packers could sneak into the playoffs. We thought Detroit would win this division, which I did. I picked the Packers to win. Oh, you did. So I picked Detroit, but I, I felt like Green Bay could be in this scenario. Like you said, Amanda, this was the exact scenario they were in last year with Detroit coming into Lambeau Field, not having anything to play for because the Seattle Seahawks won earlier that season. Well, the, the issue for this game is, to me, it's not Jordan Love, right? It's the Chicago Bears. They're one of the hottest teams in football. Just right like Detroit was last. Quick question before I go. Has are you on board with keeping Justin Fields? I think you have you to. Take I, 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 I think you have to. I think most Bears fans feel that way. Mm, he's earned it. Interesting. So that's the thing you have to ask if you're Ryan Poles when you look at this scenario. Do you think Caleb Williams gives you a bigger ceiling to win a championship? Or do you continue to build around Justin Fields, knowing what you've seen the last four or five weeks? And, and Pete, we say this. Everybody was saying Chicago could make it run in the playoffs. We said it was two years away. We thought that they could be much improved like they are. And if they win this game, that's eight wins on the season. So I would think the whole coaching staff would come back. When you look at Jordan Love and this Green Bay offense, that's the struggle with it, right? Jaden Reed got hurt last week. Christian Watson has a hamstring. Will he have his weapons this game? Because not only has the Chicago Bears offense played better, that defense is playing top 10 defense right now. Montez Sweat, remember, you asked me, Amanda, you were like, how did you feel about that second-round pick? I said, there's no way you give up a second-round pick if you don't plan on doing business. And not only does Montez Sweat lead the Chicago Bears in sacks, he still leads the Commanders in sacks this year, <laughs> and he hasn't played for them in the last eight weeks. So him coming into that team has really changed the attitude of that defense. The offense is playing good, but the defense is playing good for Chicago as well. I already told you yesterday. I said, I told you guys yesterday, they're going to be a playoff team next year. Yeah. The Bears will be a playoff team. One more thing about the Packers. They've been playing with the lead because Love has been playing well, and that turns their pass rushers loose. And yep. when you can turn your pass rushers loose, if your quarterback's playing well and your pass rushers can get after the quarterback, you're going to have success, not just in the regular season, but also in the postseason. So you think they're going to win? They're going to. We're going to say something? No, go ahead. I, th I, th I thought I heard a little Chris voice I think Chicago there. pulls the upset. Do you really? Oh. I really do. I think this is the same scenario as last year. And Jordan Love not having Jaden Reed, to me, who has been their true number one receiver because Watson has been hurt. We'll see if Watson can go with the hamstring. You know that's always fickle. So even if he does go, if something were to happen in the first quarter and he's out of the game, not having him and Jaden Reed, I think would be too much to overcome for the Green Bay Packers. Well, if that happens, then all of a sudden the Seattle Seahawks are back in play because they need the Packers to lose to get in. They would also need to beat the Arizona Cardinals this week. Man, that's tough though. Arizona, we saw what they just did to Philly, right? Playing hard. They're playing hard every single week, even though their record doesn't show it. They've done a really good job. Colin Murray, the last few weeks, being able to use his mobility and throw the ball down the field to, to McBride, the tight end. But James Conner, man, he had a career day last week versus the Eagles. And if you look at the Seattle team, we talked about them earlier, they couldn't stop a nosebleed in the run game. And that's what Arizona likes to do. So even if the Green Bay Packers somehow do lose to your Chicago Bears has, 
I don't know how confident I feel in the Seattle Seahawks going on the road to beat the Arizona Cardinals because that defense just did not show up last week versus, versus the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers with a chance to solidify their, their spot in the playoffs. So I don't know if it happens this week as well either. That defense hasn't showed up all year. I mean, there's some concern about what's going on, what style of defense they're playing in Seattle. Do they need to make changes? But the bottom line is they're not very good on defense. And Arizona is, is playing hard. I think, yeah. you know, Jonathan Gannon has done a nice job with that team. They're undermanned. They do have a lot of draft picks, so they're going to be able to make yeah. some some hay in that category next year. But when you look at Kyler Murray, I think the decision is you keep him, let him play next year, yeah. and then go forward because he's actually played much better in this offense. 23% chance to get in, according to Sports Line for the yeah. Seattle Seahawks. The, the Vikings are still mathematically alive, but only a 2% chance to get in. Pete Prisco and Lee J. Doosable here. You can hear both of them on the Pick 6 podcast. In fact, Pete was on the very last one. Ooh. Will Brinson, John Breach, and Petey yeah. Pie. Come on today. You're on today, Lee Okay, yeah. fantastic. That'll be dropping uh, later this afternoon.